My property, your property, properties are almost everywhere. It's what makes the coin go round. But what if that were to change? You see, I want to become a landlord. I want to be able to say things like, You don't have to raise your voice. Well, guess what? Now I can, because ladies and gentlemen, I've installed a landlord mod that can purchase properties all through Skyrim. And folks, they ain't cheap. I like money. Level one and with nine gold to my name, we will try and set out to become the most corrupt landlord in all of Skyrim. Let us begin. All right, so it's day one. We've just escaped from Helgen. And this, folks, is Gary McGlobison. We committed our first crime by stealing a horse and making our way down to Riverwood. The place to be. Full of working class people, Riverwood is a sanctuary of hope where the spirit of community thrives. However, that will soon change. We're slowly on our way to becoming a landlord and now we need to buy a copy of how to become a landlord. Hang on a second. How can I become a landlord when I don't even have enough coin to buy how to become a landlord? And then it struck me and I did what any aspiring landlord would do. Steal from the poor. Watch it. Quickly, grab the rest of the coins. Okay, I'm not that cruel. I didn't just steal, but I also hunted and... I also borrowed some local produce to sell. We finally saved enough gold to purchase our book and become a landlord at last. We made a swift exit and we were off to Whiterun. Persuading the guard at the gate, we made it to Whiterun. The land of the free, the land of the opportunity, the land of this man just- Did you pray today? I also made sure to push Nazim. I started poking around people's personal belongings and, well. I'm not gonna warn you again. Get out or I'll call the guards. We need to start making some coins fast. So I picked up a bounty and I also picked up my bow to do some more hunting. Yeah, hunting is not working out for me. Let's go do some bounties. Our first bounty was pretty easy to track. He was just sitting in a local mine. I tapped him with the arrows and he somewhat just got killed by the boulders. <laughs> we quickly made a return to cash in our bounty of 300 gold. We pawned off the rest of our gear and we started to make adult money. Moving forward, our landlord safe will keep all our adult money and this ledger will track our owned properties. And with said adult money, we purchased our first mine. Today's subject, slavery. In terrible conditions, our miners that I paid for started to mine. What else would, what else would they fucking do? What is it? Who, who wrote this script? We were finally ready to buy our second mine and one of the men realized their salary and suddenly decided to collapse. At this rate, I was going to go bust from just buying mines. What am I paying you miners for? To stand around all day and eat bread. We stumbled on yet another mine, but there was no property sign in sight. We took out the drug overlord and we were then paid handsomely for our troubles. This man right here is funding a world of corruption that he has not yet seen. <laughs> Our mining tycoon was growing rapidly and our miners started to enjoy their working conditions. It's day seven and we received an urgent letter from the courier. But guess what? I don't care about the courier. I care about McGlobison's life goals. That's right, we have purchase all of Skyrim. Raise rent and not children, okay? My, my parents died. We have to join the thieves guild and follow in the landlord footsteps, become a millionaire, try to at least, and get married. That's right, I'm looking at you, Lydia. Is this something McGlobison will be able to do? Yes, of course it is, because guess what? After buying all these mines, we now all have these, all these blah 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 <laughs> I think the script just had a stroke. What I was trying to say was, with all the ore that we had obtained from the mines, we started to transmute it from iron to silver, and then silver to gold. And then from there, we started to make gold rings, and we started making a little bit more adult money. 80 gold rings is gonna make us 2,000 gold. Even the shopkeeper was shocked about that bargain. As we shoved more gold into that dirty furnace's mouth, we finally made enough rings. And at last, we were able to buy our very first property and finally become a landlord. However, this is where the fun begins. You see, we can choose how much our tenants pay, but guess what? We can choose 
when we receive it. That's right, we can change the default to receive income every two days. That means our tenants need to pay rent every two days. I'm coming for you next, Grandma. Over the course of a few days, gold started to fill our pockets and we made our way to a local inn and then realized we could probably start training up our speech. So we started to head to Winterhold. I don't know why it's always raining, but now it's gonna be always fucking snowing. Despite the terrible weather, we made it and we climbed all the way up to the mountain and started the Black Star quest. It wasn't until we entered another nearby inn that I started to harass the flute man. Whoa, whoa, what is happening? Oh, all I did was push. I'm just here to level up speech. Break it up, please. Stop. Oh, God, no. I didn't do this. This was not my fault. My, my parents died, and, and now I'm all alone. This orphan needs a home, and if you don't subscribe now, who knows where she'll be in the future? Please, think of the ch I began speaking to Nelikar to level up my speech because, let's be real, ladies and gentlemen, this man has dementia. Back to White Run, we entered the Bannered Mare and started to make deals Halder couldn't refuse. Whatever you say. As soon as we got paid, we bought more properties. You're just rotten. No good. As if I wasn't corrupted enough, I fired all my workers from the mines. I don't need them anymore. I'm making gold rings. I'm making business deals. Yeah, no need to get rough. <laughs> As the gold trickled in, we purchased more properties all around Whiterun and collected our shares from local businesses. <laughs> it's been a few more days and you know what that means, folks. <laughs> Time to collect our money. Riverwood. We're back. Because I heard a, a little birdie told me that there's cheap housing here. Yeah, that's right. I'm putting your rent up. Hold up. Wait a minute. Something ain't right. Okay, fine. McLobison likes nannies. But you know what he also likes? Adult money. Buying every single property in Riverwood because I could do it. I have the coin. But the residents of Riverwood weren't happy. Whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, settle, settle down. Settle down. We're now playing residents. Evil. The residents are evil because they're chasing me with pitchers and forks. And at this rate, I was doomed. Ah! Until I hid behind a tree for a few minutes. Well, looks like we're never going to Riverwood again. At this rate, when I say I'm buying properties, I'm just buying houses. And lots of them. I should bash your face in after all you've done. Excuse me? We were starting to turn a nasty profit. Welcome to Solitude, the capital of Rimming, of Sky, of Skyrim, the place to be. Known for its bustling street market, Solitude is filled with wonderful investment properties, all of which lay throughout the city. <laughs> Dripped out of our mind and stepping right into Solitude, can we buy every single property? One hundred billion dollars. Well, no, we can't buy every single property in Solitude, but we can at least try and wait for more money to come through. Absolutely no time to deal with lowlifes these days. Go away. <laughs> After realizing Solitude was too expensive for our little pockets, we headed back to Winterhold and finally got a good night's sleep in a bed. For the first time. After buying Ranmere and Corey's house, the only property left to invest in was the Frozen Hearth. Feeling guilty about the massacre, I realized that by acquiring the entire establishment with the owners no longer alive, the sole responsibility for paying rent fell upon their only child. <sighs> oh, and the College of Winterhold? Yeah, there's no property sign either. So it was time to travel southeast of Skyrim. Welcome to Riften, home to the Thieves Guild and I live in Smavit, Birmingham if you want the fucking brawl. And the working class. They'll sure be working twice as hard after I'm done with them. We can buy the orphanage. We can buy the orphanage for 50,000 gold. So what did we do? We purchased the orphanage, of course. Why not? How bad can it be? And one more thing. I will hear no more talk of adoptions. None of you riffraff is getting adopted ever. Gorilla the kind is dead at last. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on, we purchased the local blacksmith. I should bash your face in after all you've done. We broke a hundred thousand gold in one payment. I've completed landlord. It's done. That's the video. Roll the credit. Okay. 
Soon after, we spoke with Brynjolf, which yapped for way too long about my fortune and then trusted me enough to invite me to the Thieves' Guild at long last. However, he gave us one small task before we were able to join, which is something I was naturally born to do. Alright, now I gotta collect debt. <laughs> We had three individuals from whom we needed to collect debt from. Kirva, Bursi, and Helga. Oh, my sweet Helga. And our only way of collecting debt was using force. Is your stand switched on? Jab. And you're switched on. Jab. The Conor McGregor in me was set to take on Kirva, and after putting up quite a fight, she eventually relented. I purchased the pawned prawn and made sure to set the rent to max before beating up Bercy, the store owner, for their debt. I'll pay, I'll pay. Before Halga and I were going to take things to the bedroom, she had already had the money ready to pay off her debts. Damn it. After all the debts were collected in full, we were permitted entry into the Thieves' Guild at last. I thanked Bernior for his sacrifice and then pushed him into the water. All right, enough fluffing about. We're back in Whiterun in time to buy our second inn. Naturally, we went to the Bannered Mare and decided to purchase it. That way, your solder would never be able to. Every time I look at you, my blood boils. All right, later, Holder. Thanks for your business. <laughs> Hospitality, I suppose, as well. The gods know what you've done. Why are you trying to attack me? I... I don't remember purchasing your property. I don't remember raising your... The fuck is going on? You're all crazy. She's still giving chase. <laughs> I don't believe- I'm sorry, it's for your own good. Quick, dispose of the evidence. Now you might be thinking, that is a bit scuffed, Blue Ben. I'm losing faith in your ability to be the most corrupt landlord in Skyrim, Blue Ben. Well, for that I say, how about you zip your mouth hole? Because I'm about to take you on a ride through manipulation of adult money. The modding options won't stop Mick Globerson in his tracks. But, but that's unfair. No, it's business, baby. Oh, it, it worked. We're a millionaire. We're a bloody millionaire. Now that we were a millionaire, it was time to start settling down and we purchased our first home. I'm surprised nobody blew up our home, but we're here. We have our own bed to finally get a good night's sleep. Okay, I've just fallen asleep and somebody, there's intruders. The tenants are in my home. They've come to kill me. Please, you've been mistaken. Uh, trust me, it, it was the economy. It's the inflations. Please. 